I can't imagine why. we are here that road the other one the other one all these roads are going down because here we are sat on the highest place on top of the hill oh okay that's not just a curiosity that's very important because this church coming from the 13th century so this church is about eight centuries old this church was built exactly on top of the ancient Etruscan parliament the congress the parliament okay so when uh, Etruscans uh, well, stay here 28 centuries ago, 800 years BC, the parliament, uh, the political and the economical center of the city was here. Because the ancient population they used the to have to build to the, 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 the was named Acropolis, like in Athens, maybe if you were in, in Greece in Athens, you know the Parthenon is exactly on, on the highest place. Well, so the Etruscan Acropolis was here, highest place. Then, centuries later, the church built St. Francis Church. Okay. Highest place. Well, now archaeologists are working inside, and um, probably two, three years uh, we could visit uh, the ancient uh, parliament. Not now. Okay, go. Cheers. Remember both hands. It's not going to get caught up in my back tire, is it? My jacket's not going to get caught up, is it? It's pretty in here.
Okay, we want to go now we go inside the, the church. You want to take it Fine. So uh, we are in Republic Square, Piazza della Repubblica in Italia. And uh, that's the city hall, the palace uh, you see here in front of you was built in the year 1600. The 1600, Cesare Nebbia, a very important Renaissance architect, built the palace that we, we, we see now. But uh, we're not, we don't stop here because the city hall, that's not so, so important. What is really important in this square is the church. The church is really containing all local history. Mind, this church is much older than the Duom, the cathedral. So the real, the ancient, the old local history is here. Please follow me. This church is dedicated to Saint Andrew, Saint Andrea, Saint Andrew, and uh, it was built in the year 1013. 1013, so it's really old. Wow! But what uh, is uh, very, very amazing about this church? Uh, that is a typical Romanesque style church. Uh, the Romanesque architectonic style is the, the typical uh, Middle Eastern style, starting from the 8th, 9th century to the 12th, 13th century AD. So if you travel around Italy, in Europe, or in Europe you, you can see a lot of churches very similar. But in this church there is something very, very particular, very unique. Because in the year 1926, 1926 they decided to renovate the floor. The floor was very, very old, nine centers old, very bad, very damaged. So when they removed, they took out of the bad old floor, they realized that something very, very strange was in the world. So they removed a lot of stones, a lot of sand was staying, a bit of support in the church. And when they removed the materials, one half meter underneath, they met the early Christian church. One church five centuries older than this one. Wow! So they realized that in the year 1013, this church was built exactly on top of a great ancient church built by centuries before. Wow! Uh, so we know that we know there is a, a church built here by the Byzantines, the Byzantine Byzantines, in the sixth century AD. So now. They removed all the materials uh, that were staying on the, the, the beautiful mosaic floor, you know, the typical mm -hmm. Byzantine style, the mosaics, beautiful. Mm -hmm. When they finished to discover, to clean the mosaic, the floor, the Byzantine floor, they presumed that uh, something more was uh, under me. So, on the side, they went uh, two more meters down mm -hmm. and uh, the Etruscan, the Etruscan city was there. Wow. Eight centuries BC, before Christ. Part of houses, a piece of a street, many walls from the ancient Etruscan city. Wow. When they finished to carve, to excavate in the Etruscan way, they said, but let's go down one more meter below the Etruscan way, one more meter down Villa Noviani. 16 centuries BC, 1600 years before Christ. Wow. So we know that the people were staying, living here 36 centuries ago, 36 centuries ago, people were staying here, named Villa Noviani. That's the mid of the Bronze Age, Bronze Age, because they didn't know the Iron King later. So we have this population in Villa Noviani, Bronze Age. They were building the houses just using the, the wood, cutting the trees, because they didn't know the cement and the bricks. But what happened that approximately 800 years later, so eight centuries before Christ, this population, these people, 
they met, they got in touch with the ancient Greeks. At that time, the Greeks were staying populated in the south of Italy. If you go to Sicily, you visit the Greek temples. Mm -hmm. In the south of Sicily, there is a beautiful valley named the Valley dei Templi, Temple Valley, where you see the ancient Greek church temple. So these people from central Italy, when they met the Greeks, why they absorbed a lot of knowledge, culture, technology, science. When they met the Greeks, they advanced a lot in a very short time, their life changed. Because from the Greeks, they absorbed a lot, really a lot. So from the Greeks, they learned that when you mix the volcanic ash, and a lot is, mm -hmm. you've seen it inside, you mix it with the water and limestone, you get a cement. Wow, so why were the houses using the wood much better mix than cement? Mm -hmm. Then they learned that when you cook a very temperature some kind of stones, you get iron, wow, much stronger than the bronze. In this way, they started making the swords, the helmets, the shield, the iron from the bronze, much better. So from the ancient Greeks, they learned and copied a lot of astronomy, art. But probably the most amazing thing that these people copied from the Greeks was the, the ancient Greek style way for governing the country, the state. What kind of school are you? What school? What kind of school are you? College. 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 Perfect. So you studied about something about the ancient Greece, mm -hmm. Athens, Sparta, Corinthian, Thebes. So, okay, the ancient uh, uh, Greek cities. They were independent. Any city was a small state. But in case of uh, trouble, in case of danger, when they were attacked by the Persians, mm -hmm. they came together, just one army, all together, very strong for fighting against the enemies. Mm -hmm. How we name this organization, this community? We name Confederation. Mm. Confederation. And we can say, we can tell that it was one state, even if there were independent cities, but we say it was one state, the ancient Greek. Why? Because they were speaking one language mm -hmm. and they had the same religion. Mm -hmm. One religion, one language. That's a country. Yeah. Etruscans made exactly the same. So when we tell about the Etruria, Etruria is the state of the Etruscans, it wasn't a kingdom or a public, no. It was a confederation. Twelve cities, twelve cities confederated. Perugia, Arezzo, Cervete, Carpinia, Volterra, and of course, Istan. And uh, now the Man, remember that the uh, uh, Romans came later than the Etruscans. Mm -hmm. So the Etruscans were not speaking Latin, the language of the mm -hmm. Romans. Mm -hmm. The Etruscans, they were speaking their own language. Mm -hmm. And in their language, in this town, it wasn't the name Orvieto. Orvieto, it's a Latin name. Mm -hmm. So in their language, this town was named Belzna. Probably the guy in the underground city told you mm -hmm. Belzna was the ancient Etruscan name. Belz, because Belzna, at the same time, the most important Etruscan god, mm. like in Athens, was uh, Zeus. 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 Mm. The Rome was Jove. Mm. In Etruria, in the Etruscan community, the first most important god was Belza. Mm. And why they named this town Belza? Because uh, this was the religious Etruscan capital was the Etruscan Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's why Orvieto, Velzna, was a so important Etruscan city. Because people coming from the other 11 Etruscan cities, you, they used to meet here for celebrating religious ceremonies. That's why Orvieto was a so, so important Etruscan city. And mind that when the Romans in the second centuries BC, third and second centuries BC, they attacked the Etruscans and they defeated one by one all 12 Etruscan cities. The city was the last one to be conquered and destroyed by the Romans. 264 BC, 264 BC, Benzema was attacked, destroyed, completely destroyed by the Romans. 
After that, the Ramas, they didn't allow any more people to stay here because the Ramas, they wanted to have the complete control about them the people that they were dominating. Mm -hmm. That's why they forced the survivors to move away from here in a valley, so in the valley they could take the control. Right. And here on top of the hill, what happened? Nothing. Nothing. Because they almost abandoned it, the mm -hmm. hill. Because the Roman Empire was very, very strong. They had no enemies here. Mm -hmm. Roman's enemies were 1,000 kilometers far away from here. So Romans were safe anywhere. The bottom, the valley, agriculture, animal trees, everything is there. Why to take up the food? No reason. So the Romans abandoned the hill for living at the bottom. Mm -hmm. The bottom. Mm -hmm. Seven centuries, seven hundred years, no one single man will be here. If you tell, if you speak, you have a conversation with the archaeologists, they say that's so funny because we have two materials objects from the Villa Noviani, from the Trusses, then 264 BC. Lockdown. Seven centuries, nothing, nothing, nothing coming from life from man here. Life restarts here at the end of the fifth century AD. Mm. End of fifth century AD, life is restarting here. Why? Because at the end of the fifth century AD, the barbarians, the barbarians coming from north of Germany, Scandinavia, they attacked the Roman Empire, and in the year 476, the Roman Empire collapsed. Mm. That's why the people are yeah. <laughs> more safe. <laughs> right, so they come up here. <laughs> On the family. In this way, life was stopped here. Oh. Well, uh, we have just some photos about this, this underground that unfortunately we can't visit because just only the archaeologists can. Mm. The, only the archaeologists uh, can go down. Mm -hmm. We're here now. You okay. see? Yep. When they removed all the materials from here, they wow. had to build some beams yeah. for supporting yeah. the church, otherwise this church mm -hmm. collapsed. Okay? One half a meter, the Byzantine floor, the mosaic floor. Then, all that side over there, we have uh, another like two meters down, mm -hmm. and that's the Etruscan city, mm -hmm. and then one more meter down, the Villa Noviani. That's why I told you that the local history of Vito's history is here, right. concentrated. Because if we could go downstairs there, you have in front of you, you, you touch all of Vito's history. Mm -hmm. 36 centuries of history are here. Right here. Right here. Wow. Right here. Stratificated. Villa Noviani, Etruscans, the Byzantines, and then and then where we are. That's wow. crazy. That's why this place is real. Mind that uh, this church is older than uh, the Duomo. So before building the Duomo, this was the cathedral. Cathedral means the church where the bishop is staying. Mm -hmm. It's not the size of the church. Cathedral right. Duomo is not uh, the size. It's the fact that the bishop is staying there. Mm -hmm. So before building Duomo, this was the cathedral. Well, the bishop was staying, living, and also when the popes were staying Same in the people, before building the wall, right. they were staying in this church. Wow. Mind that uh, two popes elected here inside this church, uh, two popes elected here. In the year 1188, uh, the pope at the time, the pope was Innocento III, living in Orvieto, Innocento III, mm -hmm. from this door, announced the fourth crusade. Mm. The crusade was announced here. From the pope, living here. And, uh, Visiting this underground, you, you, you realize how the concept of recycling is very, very old. Mm -hmm. Because you see that this population of the said the Villa Noviani and Trust they used to reuse, to recycle materials mm -hmm. from the previous city. So many parts, uh, stones, uh, were we used two, three times. Just 98 years ago, when they discovered that, that church, they realized that these columns, see the columns? Mm -hmm. These columns are five centuries older than this church because these are like Byzantines. Mm -hmm. If you go down, you see the columns going through and down. Oh, wow. So in 1013, when they built this church, already they removed the Byzantine roof that was there. You see two different materials. Right, yes. 
the bank has a roof. Well, yeah. They removed it, they built on top the arches, mm -hmm. the arches, and yeah. no roof up there. But they're recycling the same pillars. Right. Why not? They were here. They mm -hmm. Leave them. them. Yeah. And so, this is, you see, what a beautiful mosaic. Mm -hmm. This is a floor in this way, in the vertical. Why? Because when they came, they turned upside down the floor and they redecorated on the uh, other side. On the so other now, side. this floor is in this way because it, you, you can see the mic from two different sides. Both sides decorated from two different uh, edges. Mm. Everything was not really re reused. And so funny because the, mm. the, the Byzantines, they were Catholics, mm -hmm. so they had also the baptismal font in, inside the church. Mm -hmm. How they made the, the baptismal font? Ah. When they came here, they met the Etruscan wells, they blessed the water, now it's holy water, mm -hmm. but it's my fault. Right. They did. <laughs> they saw the job. That's really cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. This place is really very yeah. important in the local history. Beautiful. Huh? That's granite. Yeah, granite. Yeah. It's coming from about 50 kilometers from here. He got angry for you, so I'm Me? Yeah. Ready? I do? No, I'm good. You look okay. Let's go. Thank you, sir. Be on the lookout for our car. I'll stay back here. <laughs> no? Well, that's the, the oldest church in St. Norvina. This one is? Yeah.
gets dark. as a hospital. Mm. That time, they used the limestone as a disinfecting. Mm. disinfecting. I don't know if it worked or not, but it was right. used. So they painted the limestone all around the wall, and later when they took it out, also the colors came out. Mm. That's why we have no more uh, frescoes here, just, uh, just uh, up there. And uh, that, uh, when uh, See, we look at this uh, painting. Uh, you see people, saints, uh, angels. But uh, so, so often, uh, you will see, you will see the portrait face people really living that time because it was very common that uh, the artist, uh, the painter, was paid by some famous people for painting the fresco. And uh, they used it to reproduce the, the portrait of the people that were painted. So now we see people, we don't know their name, who they were, but for sure we have the, the selfie yeah. of people living centuries and centuries ago. With you because I wasn't born here. No? No, I chose seven years ago to come here uh -huh. because I was born near Venice, Venezia, very oh, touristic, right, yeah. beautiful city because it's unique all over the world. But I, I was born there and seven years ago I decided to come here. Really? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's I, I love this sunny. Okay. Here you see the typical land around the people. So we have the two typical products from the local agriculture oil and wine. Olive Love trees and, 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 yeah, and grapes. Right. Uh, typical problems. Extra virgin olive oil and, and wine. Mind that the typical local <coughs> old wines here are white. Oh, are uh, they? White. Yeah, the typical uh, wines and uh, grapes are white. Now, of course, they grow up also red grapes. Right. Sure. But uh, the typical local uh, grapes here are white. Because the soil here is a soil extremely, extremely vocated for 
the uh, white grapes mm. because here we have a, a blend of um, uh, volcanic mm -hmm. soil um, it's very rich extremely mm. um, but the sand and clay mm. and limestone and that's what if you have just the volcanic soil probably the red grapes are better but here we have not just only volcanic mm -hmm. so we have also clay and sand. sand yeah that's why I hear the, the white grapes have a very particular, very unique chance flavors. Very right. typical. Well, and uh, one, one minute to just this way. That's the cemetery. Yes, yes. That's the cemetery? cemetery. Yeah. Wow. Well, what are you doing? And uh, this one? Yes. Yeah. Down there. Uh, that's not my house. That's not your oh. house. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fall asleep. A lot of spruce trees. Oh, no. What are those? Those are olive trees. No, 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 no. The tall ones. Those are cypress. Cypress. Italian cypress. You're good. Good job. Yeah, don't look down. Yeah. You should. You should. Get on him so you can hear what's going on. Go. Oh. Give me the oh. camera back. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I forgot how you talk. No, you're good. I forgot. Sorry. What? Over there, we have a church. Uh, over there. And then another church is there where we stopped. Uh, yes. And um, this is the west side of the cliff. That's, that's west. Sunset is there. And. Uh, the east, the north, and south sides of the cliff are very, very steep, very vertical. Just here on this on this side, we have a gradual, a natural downhill. So in the Middle Age, the Middle Age, just one road was just one road was to go in or out of the city. From the other sides, north, south, and east, no way, no road to come in or out, just on the west side. So they knew that in case of attack, for sure, enemies came from here. What they did for saving the city, they built the church, San Giovenale, 1006, St. John, 1020, and the two churches used at the same time as the churches and fortresses. Churches and fortresses, and between the two churches and fortresses, this wall you see mm -hmm. for saving, for closing, for protecting the city. But if you drive from the bottom around the cliff, just here on the west side, you see a wall, a wall. built for saving the city. On the other side, the So what year? What? How? What was this? What year was this? Ten oh uh, six. Jeez. Ten oh six. It's amazing. Here you you you, you see that uh, Orvieto is in a corner of three different regions because that's Tuscany. Mm -hmm. that's Tuscany. After the crest, you go into Lazio region. The region Rome is after the the region, mm -hmm. and this is Umbria. So you're on the corner. Three regions, Umbria, Lazio, and Tuscany. And Tuscany. Tuscany, you see the Tuscany. That's yeah. Tuscany. That's, that's where we're going tomorrow. Yeah, yeah sure. Tomorrow. You drive that way. Yeah, all right. Well, well towards that direction. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. so you're going to have to tell us before we get done what road we should Yeah, take. yeah, Valdorcia. 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 Valdorc
you, you, you can get the, the motorway from here and you exit, you go ah. out the uh, motorway at the QZ. QZ? QZ exit, yeah. It's so just about uh, 30 kilometers. QZ, you, you can drive the motorway and the uh, QZ uh, way out, go out, and then from there, the Orcha Valley is. is uh, Does it is go starting. up really high? No, 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 it's no? not high. Very soft hills, the typical Tuscany. Tuscany. Perfect. Yeah, rolling hills. Very soft, very oh, soft okay. hill. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. Cool. So pretty. Well, yeah. Okay. Now we're okay. right back that way. Okay. Hit the plus sign. Is your motor on? Yeah. You got as high as it'll go? No. No? No. Whoa. Awesome. So when you get your driver's license? Yeah, but yes, uh, you might have a license, but uh, just uh, only uh, uh, not an examination, like uh, just, just to study. And then they give you the license with no examination. This is what it's like. Can go around. Yep. Nice garage. Posso dire modo.
Holy moly! People's Park, Piazza del Capitano, and Palace City. There is named Palazzo del Capitano del Park, Palace of the People's Capital. Mind that in the Middle Ages, the Capitan was the judge. Was the judge. So that palace was the court. Stand there and used the, so the prison, of course, was the court prison. But uh, over its history, many different uses for this palace because it was a port, the prison, it was also uh, sometimes the um, governor's rest and rest the house of uh, yeah, the local city's governor. But for sure, the most amazing use of this palace was the university. Middle Age, Orvieto was a poor city, the popes, and so in Orvieto. A famous university was here. And uh, here in this university, one of the greatest uh, Catholic philosophers was a teacher. He was Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas. You know, it's very famous in the States. There are many schools that is Thomas Aquinas. And Thomas Aquinas was a teacher in this, uh, this university. Uh, now, palace belongs to the city. It's used uh, for uh, expo meetings, uh, seminary, conventions, exhibitions. But I, I, as you can see, your palace was built in two steps. Because we have a typical Middle Eastern ground floor, the first floor is a Renaissance. So you see, right. you compare, yes, right. also different yeah. decoration of the windows, also different. You have Middle Age and yeah. Renaissance. Just the decoration on top of the roof are not original, just uh, they made, they did that um, two, two centuries ago. Two, two centuries, centuries ago, ago. I, I don't know why, but they decorated just such decoration. Nothing to do with the original uh, shape. Nothing to do with that. Nothing, so really. But, and, uh, and here we have uh, this palace that, unfortunately, that's uh, one of the three hotels that after the pandemic uh, died. Uh, really? Died, yeah. No open, no more open after the pandemic. So it's closed to still, today. still locked. Yeah, probably. I, I've been told that uh, the company bought it. Maybe a lot next year they will start. I see again. plants in the window. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Wow. Wow, change out the tire right there. Oh, Metzler. I didn't know that's their one of their stores. Never had Metzler, but I always use Bridgestone. Uh, I think I once. Doing good, baby? Yeah. Pretty fun, huh? Yeah. These little streets are badass. Those are cool. Yeah, but, uh, uh, 
Christian and, and Viking uh, uh -huh. uh, road. Yeah. But uh, to you, is it bad to ride? You want to see? Yeah, he'll be okay. We, you, we can look. Otherwise, we ride a different road. We can look, yeah. We can look. What did he say on the inside? Yeah, I'm okay. Go ahead. As long as there's a nice wall there. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. What is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. He's very cute. <laughs> If he's bolt breaks. Huh? They're just burning weeds. Yeah, because after, after they prune, they, they burn the leaves. Uh, oh. um, just to spend here a few words about the geological origin of this uh, territory. Well, one million years ago, ocean, just ocean. Yeah. Then, when uh, the tectonical plates moved, the Africa, the continent, pushed to north, uh, Italy raised up from water. And here we had uh, a sedimentary soil, sand and clay. So like many, 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 many thousand years later, 25 kilometers west from here, a volcano exploded. And when the volcano exploded, we had a big, uh, you see, the altitude of the plateau, the, the flat, the platform from the yes. volcanic explosion. That was the plateau. And uh, that's uh, the material that what we named Tufo. This, uh, this stone, this is volcanic uh, lava. And uh, this, uh, this stone is very permeable, very porous. So the rain goes through. But uh, at the bottom, 80, 90 meters, we have uh, the clay. The clay is impermeable and water stops. Mm. That's why inside the cliff we have uh, a lot of water. Because the water goes through the tufo and then stop when the, 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 the clay and that's very important that's not curious that's important because in this way the ancient population of three four thousand years ago they could survive here uh -huh. because they realized that water was inside they didn't know to go they didn't need to go to down the ocean. to take a water they realized that water was inside that's why they started drilling the wells they mm -hmm. drilled many many wells but they had the water. Mind that at Traskans, 8th century BC, they drilled more than 100 wells from the top and 600 cisterns. Kilometers, kilometers of pipes connecting the wells and the cisterns. But in this way, water was anywhere on top of the hill, had water. Anywhere. Wow. At Traskans were very, very smart, very skilled hydraulic engineers. They had water. And um, then this stone, this material is very easy to work, to cut. In this way, when people here, when they learn from the Greeks how to build using uh, cement bricks, they had all the materials for construction. Yeah. They just used to cut the edge of the cliff, they had the bricks. 
and then using the volcanic dust and the water cement. So that right there is that a lake or is that a river? No, it's a, yeah just for the it's a um, river and um, for, for for the agriculture. Gotcha. They're using uh, that. Uh, Big, big uh, tank, a big uh, set, big uh, gotcha. um, cistern uh, for the agriculture. Okay. That's beautiful. Oh. It's a little rainy up there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. This, this is Italy to me. This is Rome, was not. I didn't care for Rome. I didn't like it there. It's very dirty. Yeah. Very windy. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, a lot of peddlers there, a lot of people, you know, I it was just not, no. Then you know how, why I, I like to stay here in Italy. Oh, this yes. This is, this land is a territory, small town, because you can leave your bicycle there, tomorrow morning it's still it's there. It's still there. Nobody still, nobody comes inside your house, you can leave your uh, door open, no locked, yeah. nobody comes in. Not in Rome. Safe, we're, we were afraid to even walk down the streets. We were always like making sure we were together. I mean, it was just, I was, I didn't feel comfortable. It the pickpocketers, you know, stuff like that. It was just, yeah, I didn't like it. Sorrento was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, look at that high speed train. Yeah. It, yep. That thing's jamming. Get too close, please. Yeah, right. Yeah. Little branch. Huh? Oh yeah, definitely. Huh? Okay. Right on. Very pretty. Beautiful area.
Or well, this is a car parking, you see. But uh, till uh, uh, two centuries ago, it was a vineyard. A vineyard. vineyard. Oh. Yeah. And uh, you know, you know who was the let's say, joking, the winemaker, the Pope. The really? Pope? No this way. Place, this place, this uh, place, for the locals named the Pope's Vineyard. Huh. Wow. La Vigna del Papa in Italian. La Vigna del Papa. That's Vigna. a nice label. <laughs> <laughs> right. Got a lot of business that way with that, right? That's a, that's <laughs> advertising. Lots oh, of sure. money. Marketing. Yeah. Because uh, uh, said that uh, <laughs> Pope's here. Yeah, right? And uh, so, um, yeah, because now we stop for telling what happened after the Everybody Division. But you know that uh, Orvieto, for many, many centuries, was part uh, of the state of Vatican. You know, mm. well, mm. when you were, were in Rome, you, you visited the St. Peter. Yeah. Saint Peter. Okay. You know, that's not Italy. St. Peter is not Italy. It's mm -hmm. the state of Vatican. Mm, that right. is the smallest country all over the world. Right. In the past, uh, the state of Vatican was huge, very huge, very mm -hmm. big, uh, for 10 centuries all over the center of Italy. That part of Italy was the papal state, the state of the popes. And of Italy was part of it. Mm -hmm. So, until, until the year 1861, Orvieto was part of the state of Vatican. Oh, wow. Right, that uh, Italy has a, a, a very old history, but we are a very, very young country. Mm -hmm. 1861. 1861? 1861. Yes, 1861, Italy. Because before, before 1861, wasn't Italy. Many different uh, countries were. South of Italy was uh, a country dominated by the French, Right. Before the French and the Spanish, before the Spanish, uh, the Normanic, different uh, dominations. Center of Italy was the state of Italy. North of Italy, we had a lot of many small countries. Northwest, where, northeast, where I'm coming from, was the Republic of Venice. Mm -hmm. And then later, Austria. Right. Austrians were dominating the Asburgo family. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, um, the the um, uh, northwest of Italy was, uh, let's say, the beginning of Italy because it was dominated by a, a, a family from Torino, Savoia family, but they were speaking French. They were Italians but speaking French. So Italy was shared in many small countries. 1861, Italy was already king. Mm. And uh, so just uh, from the 1861, Orvieto became part of Italy. So the so on the like right out in front of the big church where we met, there's stones that say 1854. 1854. It's, it's actually 18, on the ground. Oh, on okay, the ground. 18, uh, what? 18, oh, I don't know what happened exactly in 18, uh, 1854. Uh, because 1854, maybe uh, I, I, I don't know because it's, I think that the referendum. Uh, when uh, Orvieto was enacted uh, mm -hmm. to Italy, uh, I know it was 1861. 1861, 1861. Okay. Mm, yeah. A few years before, right. something Maybe. happened, but I don't, right. <laughs> I okay. really don't know. I really don't. Well, now we go inside of this fortress. Okay. Inside of this fortress, it is named Albornoz Fortress. So now we make it. Okay. Are we going to do a lot of walking around? 
No, well, now uh, from here we have a really a nice view on the other side. Right. Uh, I don't know if you want. To, <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe just uh, can I hear the door. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. Because uh, he really he's a uh, really steep. Really steep.